Hello everyone, welcome to our live talk today. First, let me introduce myself. I'm Dr. Lee, the Head of Department of Pharmaceutical Chemistry and the moderators for today's live talk session. Just before we start, I'd like to inform some of the housekeeping rules. Please be informed that... Oh, not yet. <laughs> okay. Okay, so we can see that now uh, we have the visitor. So let's start. All right. Okay. So hello, everyone. Welcome to our live talk today. First, um, let me introduce myself. I'm Dr. Lee, the head of department for pharmaceutical chemistry and the moderator for today's live talk session. So just before we start, I'd like to inform some of the housekeeping rules. Please be informed that this session is recorded. We have muted your microphone. Hence, for your questions and feedback, please make use of the Q&A box. You can start to type in questions from now and we will get back to you during the Q&A session. Today, we are pleased to have Dr. Ng Sok Han, the Program Director of the BSc Honours in Pharmaceutical Chemistry Program for today's live talk session. To the participants today, have you ever wondered how a plant from the ocean becomes a medication that a doctor prescribes to you? Have you ever wondered how the fever-reduced medication can come in different dosage forms like tablet, suspension, and in suppository dosage form? Have you also ever wondered how to ensure the medication will work for you without bringing you any adverse effect? Who did the job for you? Now, let Dr. Ng Sok Han answer all these questions by bringing you through her live talk with the title of The Secret Life of a Pharmaceutical Scientist. Dr. Ng, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Lee. Uh, hello. Hello, good morning to everyone. And thank you so much for your interest in joining me today for virtual open day live talk on The Secret Life of Pharmaceutical Scientists. I am Dr. Ng, Senior Lecturer in Bachelor of Science Honours in Pharmaceutical Chemistry uh, Program. Without further ado, allow me to briefly uh, take you through my journey mapping until to where I am now. As you can see here, this is my journey mapping. So in year 2002, I have started my tertiary education uh, where I did my industry chemistry degree program in public uh, university, UPM. During that time, it was uh, really fun with a lot of university friends to, to study together, to hang around together. And three years time flies past after I have completed my final year research project on uh, isolation and extraction of natural compounds. And as well as my internship attached with a polymer industry. So during my internship, I realized that um, the real time job was not what I desire and looking forward to. I've made up my mind and decided to pursue my master's degree study. From there, my research interest journey uh, began. So during my two year studies, I have published uh, two research papers. And with this little achievement, I have uh, delved into research with deep uh, interest. 
So without any thoughts, I enrolled myself uh, in a PhD study where my research was all about drug delivery and formulation. After that, I, I can say that it was definitely extremely exciting research journey where I need to put uh, puzzles, parts together, fit them and assemble it to become a novel research project. So from this research, I have successfully published uh, three research paper. So my journey doesn't end there. So after my graduation, I work as a lecturer and I continue with my new research uh, project, publish papers and supervising postgraduate uh, students. My research linkage is growing. So uh, with collaboration from different public uh, university researchers. So after all, here is where I am now as a lecturer in IMU. Secret life of a pharmaceutical scientist. So many of us must be wondering how to transform a chemistry lab to the kitchen. So when we mention about kitchen, so are we passionate enough about cooking? So cooking itself is really just a chemistry. For, for example, uh, heating, freezing, mixing, or even blending together are all processes used in the laboratory and in the kitchen. So when we cook food, a myriad of different uh, physical and chemical processes at the same time take place to transform the ingredients involved. So if you have a creative mind, then molecular gastronomy might be one of your interests. The term molecular gastronomy has gained a lot of publicity over the past few years, largely because some chefs have started to label their cooking style as molecular gastronomy and claim to be bringing uh, the use of scientific principles uh, into the kitchen. So do you know what is caviar? How do we get caviar's beads? So do you know we can actually make caviar's ourselves at home? home. So in my next slide, I will show to you a simple video how to make an orange juice caviar molecular gastronomy. So 
These are the molecular gastronomy caviar's bit. If you want to make uh, caviar's bit at home, it can be easily made with just three simple ingredients. So for example, a vegetable oil, flavor liquids and gelatin powders, of course with a dropper. And you can make caviar beads uh, with any liquids. So the possibilities endless, for example, to make a balsamic vinegar caviar and sprinkle over uh, a bowl of salad or top your pasta with a ketchup a caviar or even garnish a bowl of ice kacang with palm sugar a caviar. So this caviar making is something relates to the chemistry. Besides cooking in the kitchen, a pharmaceutical scientist can also easily formulate any formulations. We know that during this time, COVID-19 has altered the way the world is turning and the cosmetic industry is no, no different. So one way it has taken us by storm is the panic um, ensured by consumer and mass purchase of hand sanitizer. So perhaps many of us are wondering what is different between hand washing and hand sanitizer? So hand washing and hand sanitizer reduce microbial population in different ways. So hand washing, whether you're done with entry bacteria soup or plain uh, water, it wash away the live microbes down to the drain. Whereas hand sanitizer, it reduces level of microorganisms by chemically, just like uh, disinfectants that kills germs and uh, on environmental surfaces. The second question to pounders, does hand sanitizer keep your hand germs free? So hand sanitizer can't remove a microbase from the skin and aren't effective against all germs. Washing your hand is still uh, better than using hand sanitizer, but uh, both helps to prevent uh, the spread of the disease. And the third question, is hand sanitizer effective against COVID-19? So according to US Food and Drug, each of us can help to stop the spread of COVID-19 disease by washing our hand regularly with soap and water under uh, for 20 seconds, especially after going to the uh, bathroom, before eating and after coughing, sneezing or blowing uh, your, your nose. So if soap and water are not available, consumers are recommended to use alcohol-based hand sanitizer containing at least 60% uh, alcohol. So the alcohol in hand sanitizer uh, work the best when you rub your hand sanitizer all over your hands, making sure to get in between the fingers and on the back of your hand. So do not wipe or rinse the back of your hands um, before it dries. So do not use hand sanitizer if your hands are visibly uh, dirty or greasy. So someone might ask, if I can't find hand sanitizer in the store, so can I make one at home? So although many stores and pharmacies uh, sell hand sanitizer during uh, this period of time, so because of the public health uh, emergency might be the hand sanitizer uh, products are, are selling fast and we can actually make a one ourselves at home. So check out the next video uh, to learn how to make your homemade uh, hand sanitizer.
uh, hopefully the two videos are interesting uh, for everyone. So moving forward, you might want to know how uh, anyone can become a pharmaceutical scientist and what is a pharmaceutical chemistry. So we know that chemistry underpins our everyday uh, existence. Everyday items we take for granted, such as washing powder, cosmetics, perfume, toothpaste, and toiletries were developed with the help of chemists. Exciting products such as a new fabric for sportswear, laptops, and mobile phones are equally dependent on uh, chemistry. Pharmaceutical chemistry is a discipline at the intersection of chemistry and various other biological uh, specialties. So we are like a bridge where involved with design, synthesis, and development for market of pharmaceutical agents or bioactive molecule, for example, drug. The IMU farm chem program introduced to all aspects of the pharmaceutical chemistry. So what does a chemist do? All right, so we are wondering chemists. Okay, so what job scope can a chemist do? So a chemist can develop new methods for the company. So as a product development, for example, uh, you can develop paint that dry faster, degradable plastic, and many more. So a chemist can also be an uh, analyzer of substances as well as to create and test any models using computational uh, chemistry. And besides that, there are a wide range of uh, work scope. For example, once graduated, you can work as a lecturer or researcher. You can explore in research and development. You can become a clinical research associate, or even you can work in a manufacturing, quality controls, or sales and marketing industries, and many more. Based on the diverse uh, work scope, we have success story from our alumni to share here. We often have active engagement with our farm camp alumni. We have numerous IMU news as well as newspaper articles published on alumni sharing about their journey, about their working experience. So these articles share about working experience as a formulation a chemist by Yun Sin. Right after graduated, Yunxin attached to Q and Z cosmetic manufacturing syndrome per heart. And currently he is the head of R&D department. So although he had graduated back in 2016, Yunxin is still very active in sharing and engaging with the junior students of the program through his talk as an invited uh, speaker. Besides from our alumni working in cosmetic field, we also have Eric Yong who worked in a pharmaceutical company. Right after completion of his internship at Oncogen Pharma, Eric was offered a permanent position as a formulation executive in formulation uh, development department. We also have our alumnus Fabian Mock, who worked as a quality analyst and later as a chemist in Singapore and attached to SI Group. So this SI Group um, uh, is a broad array of product, including pharmaceutical, plastic, oil and gas, and many more. Next, we also have um, Bawani. So Bawani Virgin is our alumna who worked with pharmaceutical industry. She completed her internship uh, with Simple Pharma and has an opportunity to expose to good manufacturing practices, good laboratory practices and halal uh, practices. So currently she is working uh, with Johnson & Johnson Syndrome Per Heart as a regulatory affair associate. We also have a uh, Junro. So Junro uh, worked as a chromatography uh, service engineer at Perkin Elmer. Um, from the diverse uh, work scope from cosmetic to pharmaceutical, 
to oil and gas to service engineer industry. We also have uh, our alumnus who work as a product specialist um, quality control. Pharmaceutical chemistry is a very unique and first program in Malaysia to provide a complete and specialized training in pharmaceutical chemistry. So students are taught by experience of faculty which hold a PhD degree. Apart from teaching and learning in lecture room, students are also exposed to one or two fields we seek to industries each semester. And students will also exposed to four months internship and nine weeks of research uh, project. And one of our highlight in teaching and learning activities is sharing session of internship experience by senior students, as well as talk held by external industry experts. And we are very proud that we have a strong linkage with industry partners where we often invite them to come and share their expertise with our students. And in this slide, you can see photos of sharing, sharing session of internship experience and talk by external industry experts. And students really enjoy the real-time sharing experiences by the speaker. Besides that, students also gain their experience during industry field visits to pharmaceutical, cosmetic, and chemical uh, industry. Program recognition. So FarmCamp program is accredited by MQA and RSC. So the Royal Society of Chemistry, RSC, accredited many degrees in the chemical sciences in the UK and worldwide. We do take this to make sure that university chemistry courses provide the quality you expect from a degree. So when you choose an accredited chemistry program, you can be confident that you are getting a high quality education, providing the knowledge and key skills that you need for a successful uh, future. So besides that, the graduate from FarmCamp program will be given credit recognition to pursue Master of Pharmacy program at the University of Sydney or and Curtin University in Australia. So FarmCamp program also has a new articulation track with University of Dundee. And here I would like to share with you about uh, Anna. So she is an uh, international student from Uganda and she received a credit recognition to pursue her Master of Pharmacy study in Curtin University. She is now uh, practicing as a pharmacist in Western Australia. Next, we have uh, Wayne and Simon to share with us as well. Uh, both of them received uh, their credit recognition into the Master of Pharmacy program in University of Sydney, and they are now practicing as a pharmacist in Australia. And this uh, photo shared on the internship experience abroad at the University of Nottingham, UK. So student, you can have an option to choose to complete your internship in local or abroad for the time duration of four months. For the student internship in IMU Farm Camp Program, we have partnership with international industries such as GSK, SMC Singapore, LBS Laboratory Bangkok, and many more. We do have a good relationship with pharmaceutical and cosmetical uh, industry partners, as well as a research institute such as the Malaysian Palm Board Oil, UKM, UPM, Samdabi, Malaysian Rubber Board, and many more. And these are the companies under chemical and oleochemical, food and biotechnology industry for students' internship. This slide summarizes the career pathway if one has successfully graduated from his or her basic degree in pharmaceutical of science honors in uh, farm camp program. You can choose either to continue your, your study in postgraduate degree, or you can work in a diverse uh, career field. 
Last but not least, I would like to share Anyu has once again been awarded the highest six star in rating system for Malaysian Higher Education Institution 2018-2019. So Satara is a rating system developed and introduced by the Higher Education Ministry in back in 2007 to ensure that the standard of higher education institutions are based on autonomy, quality, and institutional performance. And with this recent award, we will continue to aspire for excellence in everything that we do in IMU. And that brings us to the end. I would like to thank you for your time and attention uh, for today. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ng, for the very informative um, and interesting sharing sessions yeah, on the different roles and the prospects of the pharmaceutical scientists or the pharmaceutical chemists. So now, okay, we will be entering to this Q&A sessions. All right. So, okay, let me look at the questions that we have. All right. So, all right. Okay. So uh, let us start with these popular questions. Okay. So, um, okay, what's the difference? Okay. Students, all right, still because, um, yeah, they uh, see this pharmaceutical uh, uh, term, okay, so they want to know what's the difference between pharmacy and also the pharmaceutical chemistry program. All right, so thank you so much uh, for the questions, all right. So, um, pharmacy, uh, when you graduated, you are you are you become a pharmacist, but whereas pharmaceutical chemistry, once you graduated, all right, you, you are a chemist. And from school chemistry program, we are we are not a prof, uh, provisional um, uh, attached to provisional body. So once you graduated, okay, you can work uh, in a very diverse uh, uh, job scope. You are you can formulate, you can um, develop, right? A formulation and etc. Whereas pharmacists, okay, you you are the one who prescribe right, the drug uh, to the consumers, to the patient, and the people who work behind uh, the, the drug to formulate the drug is the pharmaceutical chemist. Yes. Thank yeah. You. Yeah. So students, so if you, um, depends what you want. So if you are a person that you like to do counseling, you uh, like to talk to people. So pharmacy is the program, okay, for you to consider because pharmacy, as what Dr. Ng mentioned, that they are focused on consultation, patient care and drug counseling, right? So pharmacists, they work in hospital, uh, community pharmacies in prescribing drug as what mentioned by Dr. Ng, okay? And also, they do dispensing the drugs, all right? So um, they are, I think, some a little bit uh, confusion. Sometimes the students also see that the pharmacists are also um, working in the pharma industries, okay? So we do have uh, pharmacists, uh, graduates working in these three uh, areas, okay? So for what's the difference, okay, between farm chem and uh, pharmacy? So um, Dr. Ng already explained, okay, perhaps I uh, add a little bit more, okay, on the farm chem, all right? So the farm chem, all right, they are more uh, focused on the laboratory skills, right, hands-on skills. We have a lot of uh, practical sessions, all right? So for the farm camp, all right, students, they are well-trained in different instrumental handling and troubleshooting skills, analytical skills in interpreting chromatography and spectroscopy data. So like uh, Dr. Ng, just now you show that our graduates, all right, the uh, one of our graduates work in uh, product specialist, okay, work in Pekin Elmer General, right? So yes. this, yeah. So you can see that all those sophisticated machine actually is a lot like what you uh, have been seeing in the forensic science uh, forensic science related drama okay so those kind of uh, instrumental analysis okay pharmaceutical chemists they are well trained in uh, reading the data okay interpreting the data so this is the difference between uh, pharmacy and also the farm chem so and also i think um uh, from uh, Dr. Ng's um, presentation. So we also understand that Dr. Ng also uh, well versed in uh, natural product, okay? So farm camp, uh, they are, the graduates, they are uh, well trained in uh, techniques involve purification and isolations of the mixture of the natural product, okay? So if you're interested in this type of uh, uh, experience, okay? Uh, so you 
can consider about uh, pharmaceutical chemistry. All right. So the farm chem graduates, they also learn in designing uh, new reaction routes and carry out synthesis work. Okay. So to synthesize heterocyclic compound. Okay. So heterocyclic compound, they are the uh, most of the bioactive compound. They are in heterocyclic form. Okay. In which I think all the science students know what is heterocyclic. Okay. So it's like a benzene, but it's, it's not a benzene. All right. Okay. So and then our uh, very interestingly also because in our farm camp we uh, have a lot of hands on so our students also learn to prepare metal complexes okay we have this inorganic chemistry right Dr. Yeah. so these metal complexes right um, it's actually uh, involved in cancer therapy nowadays okay so hence the students get some uh, exposure in making preparing uh, metal complexes in the lab all right so um, and also uh, one of the difference between the farm camp program and also the pharmacy is that uh, our students, right, they also learn uh, about this uh, one module called pharmaceutical engineering. So this pharmaceutical engineering actually uh, introduced the principle of the plant design, something like an engine engineering course, but um, it because it's just a one, one module to prepare our students to venture into the pharmaceutical manufacturing uh, company. So they learn about this uh, equipment and machinery uh, for the productions, production lines, all right? So that's the difference between pharmacy and farm camp. So if you like to do uh, more hands-on, more interpreting of uh, data analysis, uh, like to do R and D, okay. Um, so, uh, pharmaceutical chemistry, uh, could be, uh, yeah, your cup of tea, okay. Mm -hmm. But if you are, uh, you prefer to, uh, meet with people, do counseling, okay, patient care, okay. So, um, uh, you can consider about pharmacy program, yeah. So, hope we have under, uh, we have actually un answered your questions. All right. So. Um, let's take the other questions, all right, Dr. Ng. Yeah. So this uh, students also want to know more about the internship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the students want to know whether um, they can actually choose where they con where to conduct their internship. So the internship site, can they decide uh, where they want to go, Dr. Ng? Uh, yeah, thank you so much for the for the questions. So regard, referring to the internship of the farm camp program internship, duration period is a uh, four months, uh, 16 weeks. So student, you can uh, actually choose you know, your, your, your internship preference uh, to where you want to attach, right? And of course, before um, you apply for, for the internship uh, placement, so uh, the lecturer, the coordinator will brief the student, will guide through the students, all right, on how to prepare a good a CV and how to prepare a or a, a letter right before you uh, go for the application and you can actually uh, choose the industries that you are preferred as long as um, the industry all right review your resume review your cv all right and meet with your requirements um, for the four months internship so uh, they can offer you a placement so there's no worries you can actually uh, look for any types of uh, industry laboratory right to come to do your internship yeah thank you dr Ng. yeah yeah students actually you can uh, choose uh, the in internship placement where you want to attach to and then uh, we uh, have the internship coordinator to actually guide you on doing that, okay, to apply your applications and also because we do have a good partnership with uh, uh, the uh, companies, okay, the um, local companies and also mm -hmm. international uh, uh, research center. So you can actually uh, talk to us, talk to your mentor, talk to the faculty member, talk to the internship coordinator, okay? Tell us what you expect, okay? What you want to learn, okay? So um, we will actually advise you, okay? And then uh, help you in actually applying to the placement that you uh, want to actually uh, explore, okay? So for the internship, right, uh, as actually mentioned by Dr. Ng, one of the unique features of the IMU Pharmaceutical Chemistry Program is that we have this um, one whole semester, four months, okay, for our students to uh, attach to a company, okay, to uh, uh, have a, to have the experiential learning, yeah, so that they actually uh, grasp all this, um, 
uh, transferable skills, okay? So because our internship is actually uh, being a, arranged in such a way that it's actually uh, in the final year. So mm -hmm. students, you actually have completed all the uh, uh, core modules, mm -hmm. okay? So you're well equipped with the uh, knowledge and also as well as the hands-on skills, okay? Uh, uh, during this uh, first uh, first uh, one, two, three, four, five, five semester, okay? Sem one to sem five. So you're actually well equipped. Then we uh, send you out to the uh, internship placement, okay? So of course, we will brief the industry that what are the learning objectives that we want our students to actually gain during the placement, okay? So students, um, you are actually... Uh, 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 learn or you have actually learned all this knowledge, uh, knowledge and also the uh, skills. So then it's time for you to see how you link all this dot together and then you practice it uh, in your internship training and you then uh, come back to us, uh, yeah, uh, giving us presentation and reflect yourself, telling us what you have learned, okay? So uh, and not another uh, unique features for about, uh, our internship is because of it's actually being um, designed in such a way that it's actually after your internship, followed by one whole semester, a short semester of research project, okay? So this um, research project, uh, short semester is a dedicated semester for you to carry out your research. So if you are having interest to do an extended type of uh, collaborative project with the industry, do talk to us, talk to the PD, talk to the uh, research project coordinator, talk to the internship coordinator, talk to myself, okay, uh, I'm the uh, HOD for the department. So uh, we are all here to assist that, to help you to identify uh, that uh, project that you can do extensively, whereby you carry out internship, okay, four months in a company. After that, okay, you can also collaborate having a research project uh, between the USD and mm -hmm. also the internship uh, company. Okay, so this is just one of the options, all right? So another thing is because of it's a four months uh, internship uh, duration. So actually some of our students also take the opportunity to, uh, to actually explore abroad, okay? So we do have students, um, they yeah. tell us that they wanted to actually um, try like uh, ex, uh, attach okay they want to experience uh, uh, yeah uh, working abroad and then uh, doing research abroad so we have our uh, students actually they attach to um, research center in France and then uh, in UK Japan. Uh, and Japan yes. uh, um, Australia, okay. So some are uh, attached to a uh, company in Singapore, okay, right. and oh. yeah, even Thailand, yeah. Mm -hmm. So actually, uh, we are, are very open for uh to listen to you to see what you are uh, actually intended to do. Then we are here to assist, okay. So we will advise you accordingly. So this is uh, about mm -hmm. the internship, all right. So uh, let's uh take another questions, all right. So um. Okay, um, about uh, the demand, okay? Is there a demand for pharmaceutical chemists in Malaysia? So this is another very uh, interesting questions and also popular mm. questions that um, you are maybe having a little bit of uh, doubt whether there is a demand or not uh, for a pharmaceutical chemist in Malaysia. All right, so if... Um... If you would like to ask me about the demand after you graduate, right? I can say that the demand of the job scope is very, very diverse, right? In Malaysia, because once you graduate, graduated as a chemist, so you can work in, in any kind of industry, all right? As long as that industry, they require research, they require to develop all right, the product. They have a laboratory a research centers, right? So you, you, are, you are needed all right, uh, for them, right? As a chemist to, to, to work on something uh, for the new product for the company. So you can uh, work in food industry, cosmetical industry, right? Uh, pharmaceutical industry, um, for, uh, for example, glove industry, right? So they need chemists as well, you know, to do the research right, on, on, on the glove uh, using the lab bags and etc. So as well as um, you can explore in education line, you know, become a lecturer as well. So actually, 
if you look into the demand, I can say that it's a very wide you know, uh, work scope. Uh, the demands are there. So um, you, you can explore uh, in any kind of industry that you're interested you know, uh, after you graduated. Yeah, thank you. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, true, uh, Dr. Ng, yeah. So because of this um, healthcare, right, also um, mm. being actually uh, selected, okay, as one of the 12 key uh, economic area, okay, by the government, okay, so the demand of the pharmaceutical chemists, okay, will be highly sought over. Even now, uh, pandemic, okay, pandemic uh, actually uh changing the world okay so but you can see that because of this um, pharmaceutical chemists they can actually contribute in healthcare so you can see that the demand okay is actually uh, remain there during the pandemic okay so actually we also have uh, hear from our alumni that some of them they uh, are working in pharma company some of them they work as a clinical research associate, okay? So they work in cosmetic, uh, cosmeceutical, they work in personal care. So all these industry, they are essential, okay? They never stop uh, productions and then hence our students are not losing job, okay? So mm -hmm. in fact, they need to follow the SOP, okay? Um, they work um, by rotations, okay? They're still going back to work. So this is um, a security of job, okay? So I can say that the uh, demand uh, for pharmaceutical chemists, okay, um, in Malaysia, that's no problem, okay. So and also as mentioned by Dr. Ng, so because you are, uh, it's a very wide, okay, uh, web uh, scope whereby you can actually diverse, okay, uh, diverse area that you can actually explore into. Um, importantly, is you need know what you want, okay. Then you uh, you um explore into that area and to be persistent okay to be specialized mm. in one area okay so for instance if you like uh, to uh, work in pharmaceutical uh, companies pharmaceutical industries so there are a lot of roles that you can play okay as a pharmaceutical chemist okay so for instance all right in Malaysia we have these uh, local companies and also some of this MNC okay so it depends on what interest you are in uh, which area so if you like to do um uh, uh, drug development, okay, you can actually help to improve the stability of the drug formulations, okay. So drug stability, in fact, is very important. So because if not stable, then uh, shelf life will be short, okay, then it will actually uh, uh, cost a lot of money because of um, a short sh shelf life, you can't sell it, then you have to dispose it, okay. So and also in Malaysia, okay, actually, we are manufacturing a lot of these generic drug formulations and nutraceuticals and supplements during this pandemic, um, our, our graduates, our alumni, actually some of them work in the pharma company. So they tell us that the demand of supplement increased. Okay, mm -hmm. I don't know why. Okay, perhaps um, yeah, people started to think of the well-being, health. So that's why they uh, uh, yeah. So also can see that the uh, the the demand of the the <laughs> they tell that the the sales of this uh nutraceutical actually increase okay uh whereas other area actually is uh going downward okay so uh and also in um personal care okay so they are a lot of uh, uh uh products okay so people will not stop using uh personal care okay mm -hmm. when whatever situation they will still need to use the personal care okay and then the industry they are very um uh uh, fast in responding to pandemic. Mm -hmm. So they actually see that of pandemic, okay, then they actually come up with uh, the hand sanitizer type of products, okay, and sanitation products, okay. Um, does, does you see how the uh, roles of the pharmaceutical chemists can play? And also because of the pharmaceutical chemists, they are more focusing in the, and also one part of it is the focusing on analytical. So they, uh, in all these industries, all the industri industries, you need method uh, validation. So method uh, development, because you need to make sure that the quality of the product is good. Good. Hence, you need to have a chemist to have uh, well versed in all these analytical skills and the uh, instrumental skills in order to help the company to ensure that the QA and QC is, uh, is good so that your product is actually uh, uh, 
can be uh, come to the market. Okay, so there's a lot of uh, different um, roles and areas that a pharmaceutical chemist can play. All right, mm -hmm. so um, then we. Uh, okay, so I have another uh, questions. Oh, okay, a few questions over here about okay about the uh, situation now. Okay, so one of the uh, participant asked if uh, he or she starts uh, meaning that join us in mm. February. Mm. Yeah, perhaps I think Dr. Ng, uh, you can actually brief about the uh, commencement uh, uh, Time okay, so uh, when when is our commencement okay to clarify about commencement and also um uh, the questions is actually asking about if you uh join in uh, February intake okay all right will the courses to be uh, online yeah all right so uh, thank you for for the questions right regarding uh the intake uh, for for. For February, so the commencement uh, date for February intake will be on the 22nd of February. So student, if uh, you join us on the 22nd of February, you will go for uh, MPU modules first. You will complete the MPU modules, Mata Pelajaran Umum. All right. So until um, five weeks, until um, uh, March, then you will go for the exams, right? So right after exams, right, you will have a very short uh, break and the semester one for the program to start on the 26th of April. So on the 26th of April will be your semester one, right? So the semester one will be um, 14 weeks of teaching and learning, right? And you have a one week of study break and two weeks of examinations, right? So because of the pandemic uh, and the fluid situation this year, so all the teaching and learning uh, of the lectures will be converted online. But uh, don't worry students, because um, you can come back uh, to the campus for the face-to-face -face, uh, practical skills. So because practicals um, uh, is important right, um, for, for the students, right? And our program is also accredited by Royal Society of Chemistry and under the guidance, all right, so we need to fulfill the accreditation uh, standards that the practical skills to deliver to the students must be 100%, all right, face starting from semester one. Yes, so if you join us in semester one, so your lecture will be online based and you'll be interacting with the lecturer, all right, in, in, in online. Uh, uh, through the Teams, Microsoft Teams, whereas for the practicals one, you need to be back on campus uh, to conduct a, a practical skill space face to face. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So yeah, thank you, Doctor Ng. Okay. So actually, uh, you there are like two commencement date for the February in particular. You can join the uh end of February. Okay, for the MPU, then followed by the core module started in end of April. So for those that if you receive your results slightly late, you can also join us um in the April okay commencement date because that is the core module starts uh, uh during end of uh, April. So uh join us the uh open day then we can actually have a more detailed discussion. So just to tell you that actually for the first in uh, first intake February, so we have two commencement date. Lah. One is February, another one is end of April. You can join any one of it. Okay, so if you want to know more, come to uh, talk to us. Okay, so um, but I echo to Dr. Ng Sok Han that because the program, okay, so it's actually to uh, well train a pharmaceutical chemist as we emphasize that actually the uh, hands-on skills, okay, laboratory skills and the analytical skills is very important, okay, because uh, it's considered as a skill-based uh, 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 orientated the, the program, okay. So that's why we need, need to make sure that our students competent in hands-on mm -hmm. skills. Hence, all right, during the pandemic, all right, so uh, previously when the uh, MOHG not allowing us to actually come back to campus, so what we do is actually we do replacement of the practical sessions, all right. So the um, um, research uh, the practical labs actually we follow the SOP to have a limited number of students in one lab okay and then we arrange replacements for the students in order for the students to actually have the hands-on skills okay so we need to make sure about that okay another thing is because of we are the RC accredited uh, degree okay so we 
um, you can uh, see that actually we are benchmarking to the uh, overseas degree. Okay, so this is another unique unique uh, features of our program. Okay, RSC accredited, and then um, yeah, uh, we uh, or we we have some uh, uh, sometimes we also have some webinars. Okay, with the RRC. Okay, in order to uh, uh, get some updates uh, uh, from them, okay, and also they also arrange some webinar, okay, uh, for our students, okay, to help our students in a certain aspect like CV writing, okay. So, uh, yeah, so they actually are also supporting us in uh, various uh, 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 event and even some outreach uh, activities, they are also supporting us, yeah, for the RSC. And for talking about the RSC, actually, um, for this um, pharmaceutical chemist, okay. So you, some of uh, you may actually uh, uh, wanted to know what's the difference between mm -hmm. pharmaceuticals. Uh, you have seen that uh, there are some pharmaceutical sciences program and also the pharmaceutical chemistry program. Perhaps Dr. Ng, you can also uh, uh, highlight to us what's the difference between pharmaceutical sciences and also pharmaceutical chemistry program. All right, so, um... Okay, so pharmaceutical chemistry program, right? So we train our students, right? Uh, mainly to, uh, like Dr. Lee mentioned just now, uh, in analytical skills, you know, so students, um, you'll be more exposed to the laboratory skills, uh, the instrument skills, the development skills, the formula, formulating uh, skills. So you'll be specialized, uh, trained um, on how to use a certain instrument, how to analyze it, you know, how to formulate a product, and then we will go further to testing on the product, you know, to make it stable and and to ensure that the product, all right, uh, can, can be marketed, right, and to, to achieve a certain uh, standards. So this is what the pharmaceutical chemistry um, program where we train our students mainly focus on the chemistry uh, based uh, knowledge right so whereas for the pharmaceutical sciences program so um, I couldn't say that uh, um, it will be more focused on only chemistry so they might be uh, uh, quite diverse you know yeah, uh, they have some biology yeah, biochemistry they have, all right yeah, so neurosciences they are, uh, yeah. they're quite diverse you know and they are not focusing into uh, one uh, major scope like a uh, farm program right so because of of that you know they they, they have a diverse uh, knowledge uh, to biological science uh, to chemistry science you know so but in farm camp uh, we are really a focus of uh, chemistry program yes to train our students Having said that, right, but mm. uh, just to uh, clear the air that, uh, yeah, so pharmaceutical chemists, all right, so we actually, it's a niche area, um, it's actually lying between pharmacy and chemistry, okay, so as we all know that um, if you talk about pharmaceutical, so you can't run away from uh, chemistry, chemistry component, yeah, mm -hmm. so that's why pharmaceutical sciences, they also do uh, have all these formulations and then they do have some uh, chemistry component, yeah, but they have um, uh, more uh, biology component. But having said that, not uh, that we don't have the biology, we also have a uh, minor component of this um, pharmaceutical biotechnology, pharmaceutical mm -hmm. microbiology in order to complement the uh, program to make sure that our students actually understand, okay, so because if you only know how to make the drug but you don't understand how it works yeah in a human body that is not going to be helpful as well so for the pharmaceutical chemist is actually very unique whereby the you learn you understand also how actually it works okay so the absorptions all right that's why you have this pharmacology module as well okay so i think um, yeah to uh, make it even clearer is that the pharmaceutical sciences is uh, applied sciences and then uh, for the pharmaceutical chemist it's actually uh, more on chemistry and also with a blend of a pharmaceutical and also of course some component of uh, biology and the biggest difference is that, is that the pharmaceutical chemistry Actually, you can um, you are recognized by the Institute Kenya Malaysia. Okay, so despite of you can work, uh, you are work ready in pharmaceutical company because you um <clears throat> you are being well trained in all these um uh, standards. Okay, the very stringent pharmaceutical standards like GMP, GLP, pharmacopoeia, and the drug monograph. So in a applied uh if uh the applied uh chemistry program, they don't learn about that. 
area, okay, the uh, requirements, the pharmaceutical requirements in which we cover that, okay. And but at the same time, because we have sufficient chemistry component there, that's why it's being recognized by RSC, Royal Society of Chemistry, as well as in uh, Institute of Chemo Malaysia. Hence, um, the uh, graduates actually they can also uh, register as a uh, registered chemist with the title of CHM. So um, after you have graduated and you work for one year, so you can actually register with Institute of Chemia Malaysia. Um, even though the um, uh, chemistry, okay, pharmaceutical chemistry program is not uh, requiring the provisional registrations, okay, but you can actually register with the uh, IKM with the title of CHM. Then uh, with this CHM title, okay, if you are working in uh, some of the industries whereby it's involved uh, the uh, 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 analytical department whereby you need to sign off, okay, uh, sign off the validate, okay, the uh, results, okay, being uh, uh, to verify, validate the results uh, being produced by the technician, only chemists can do mm. that uh, uh, signage of the uh, signing of the documentations on the uh, uh, um, validated uh, methods. Okay, so and also because you uh, you are this um, RC accredited um, degree, so um, you can actually you already partially fulfill the requirement uh, to become a chartered chemist. Okay, mm -hmm. so chartered chemist is actually one of the highest qualific uh, uh, recognitions uh, for the chemist, whereby if you have sufficient uh, track record, okay, then you can apply to become a chartered chemist with either Royal Society of Chemistry or with the uh, SCS American Chemical Society, okay, both uh, international uh, professional bodies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, whereas for pharmaceutical sciences, they are they are not considered as a chemistry program, hence they can't actually uh, register with uh, IKM. If they want, they need to sit for additional uh, examinations, okay, with IKM after their graduation. They need to sit for quite a number of papers in order to uh, register. Okay. So uh, for for the um I'm new farm camp, so it's actually being recognized and we are uh, graduates, uh, they do register with um, IKM to become a registered uh, chemist, especially for those that working in analytical department. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think uh, it's almost time there, okay? Mm -hmm. So let's take the uh, uh, last questions, okay, before we wrap up, all right? So, um, okay, so, um, okay. Uh, is there a research subject in the degree? Uh, students actually, uh, the last questions that we want to take is actually uh, students want to know whether there is a research subject in the degree and is it a group work or individual work? How is the topic being determined? Yeah. All right, so uh, regarding a research module, so yes, we do have a research module in our program and we uh, this research module is um, in their short semesters, you know, the higher semester whereby we have one a research methodology module, right? So in this research methodology module, students will be exposed to, to some certain presentation, you know, and also uh, prepare, you know, um, uh, how to develop right, your research method. So we will put this uh, research methodology module in the short semester whereby um, when you're ongoing for the research methodology module, you'll be exposed to the research project as well. So these, these two research methodology and research project will run at the same time. Yeah. So from there, student, you will be uh, learn more, you know, um, what's about uh, the project, you know, you're you are doing, you know, and of course you can choose the, the project uh, title, you know, you can attach to a uh, various uh, a research field, you know, uh, with your, uh, uh, yes. Yeah, just to add on to Dr. Ng, actually mm -hmm. in IMU, we are very organized, okay, and then we uh, we do things uh, appropriately and by step by step, yeah, so actually in mm -hmm. IMU for uh, the research project, okay, for instance, for our IMU pharmaceutical chemistry uh, program, so for our students, when they work on this final year project as mentioned by Dr. Ng, so titles uh, will be released okay, by the supervisor. Okay? So we will, we will receive the titles and the synopsis. Then you can actually approach to all different supervisors and have some discussion with them. And uh, you are actually 
uh, um, feel free to actually uh, explore around. We call it as mm. shopping of the title. So students will actually go around to see the faculty member to find out more. So after you have uh, decided which title to work and then you have a mutual uh, agreement with the lecturer, okay? So then you can actually uh, start to prepare a proposal. You'll be guided to prepare a proposal. And in IMU, so we actually uh, need to, uh, we will train our students in order they will actually need to uh, be approved by the IMU JC uh, ethic committee. Okay, it's a joint uh, committee to mm -hmm. ensure that the project okay is actually scientifically sound and ethically right. Okay, so that's why we will have a process whereby uh, we have a, a panel in order to um, uh, give suggestion like, and approve the research project before our students can start. All right, so just mentioned by Dr. Ng that we have this dedicated short semester for our students to work on this research project. So research project is actually an individual work, okay? So uh, because you will need to have your own title in order to come up with your own thesis, that thesis is actually representing you, okay? What you are actually, uh, uh, you uh, having some uh, specialized skill in your final year project that representing yourself, okay? So that's why you will need to have an individual uh, work, okay? But normally we will put the students in, uh, in uh, uh, a few of them in one group whereby you will have your uh, individual work and individual title, but you can be under the same group with the uh, same supervisor so that you can have some good, di uh, good discussion among you and your peers, okay? So uh, that's the uh, research project work. Mm -hmm. And also coming back uh, to this research project, because um, we are very unique that it, uh, it's a three years duration and actually we pack, uh, we actually uh, uh, design the curriculum, okay, in, uh, in uh, you can, we can say that it's actually, you will be, uh, being trained in every in every angle, okay, and every aspect, okay. So that's why uh, this three years program, you also gain an honors degree. So honors degree is only for a degree whereby you have a research project, and our program we have a research mm -hmm. project. Hence, it's honors degree. You can see that some of the program is not a, a honors degree. It's a it's a basic degree. So mm -hmm. a basic degree, you need to actually uh, continue. Uh, uh, one semester or another year in order for you to complete your honors degree. Okay, so this another uh, unique features that we design our curriculum in a very unique way whereby we can actually able to allow students to uh, uh, complete in a three years uh, due program duration and at the same time have one semester of the internship uh, experiential uh, learning. Okay, and also we uh, have this uh, uh, one short semester to train our student in uh, uh, research methodology and also hands on uh, for the research project. project. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. So I think uh, we uh, come to the end for the sessions. Okay, so uh, thank you for everyone. Okay, for a very um, interactive sessions. Thank you so much for the active participations in the Q and A. All right. So. Um, Okay, last but not least, I'll, I'll wrap up this session. Okay, so thank you everyone for attending this live talk. And then uh, thanks Dr. Ng for the very uh, informative and also interactive sessions. Okay, uh, briefing, briefing the students about the uh, program and also uh, giving them the answers about the uh, some of the doubts. Okay, mm -hmm. so all right. So, um, Okay, so we have this um, virtual open day this coming Sunday. Please join our virtual mm -hmm. open day this coming Sunday, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. So you can register at www.imu.edu.mind slash open day. Okay, so um, this virtual open day, you can actually have live chat with our mm -hmm. faculty members. All right, so I'll also be there in the morning sessions and also have um, the um, uh, former PD, okay, also in the afternoon sessions, okay, so please join us and then uh, come to have live chat with us, all right, mm -hmm. so and also um, during this open uh, virtual open day, so you can actually enjoy the application and registration fee waiver of up to 800 ringgit Malaysia for all the programs except for this uh, medicine and dentistry, okay? So for farm camp program, so if you come to apply, okay, this coming Sunday, okay, you can have a waiver of up to 
Ringgit Malaysia 800, okay? So you don't sign up today, even though you're interested, you wait for Sunday and you sign up. So you get the this uh, waiver of RM 800, okay? All right, so with that, I thank everyone, all right? And then I will end the session. Thank you so much, okay, for joining this session, all right? So uh, take good care, everyone. Stay safe and healthy. Bye-bye. Yeah, bye.